But first, a medical treatment approved but rarely used to treat pain is under scrutiny tonight as part of a $220 million case against Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. We're so glad that you're here with us at 5.30 on 10 Tampa Bay. I'm Courtney Robinson. I'm Frank Wiley. The Kowalski family case featured in the Netflix documentary Take Care of Maya in the fourth week in court. Today, medical experts defending the use of ketamine to treat Maya Kowalski. Adoria Chumba joins us live from the Sarasota Courthouse in Venice with what happened today, Adure? And on the stand today, the witness stand, that is Tampa doctor Anthony Kirkpatrick was the censure of all eyes. He's the one who prescribed that controversial ketamine treatment from Maya Kowalski. He was also the first to diagnose the then 10 year old girl with complex regional pain syndrome. She could form blood clots in her legs and they can break off, go to her lungs, and it could be fatal. And the problem with that, in children, especially in children, it's a silence. It's, it's silent. It's, it's hard to diagnose. A longtime pain specialist, Dr. Kirkpatrick, testified how ketamine treatments work for patients like Maya. It's dose dependent. You have to get the dose up. So we want, we want that temporary loss of memory. Is that but, part of the resetting process? Right and testified how he first met the Kowalski family. The family clearly felt there was something desperately wrong with their child and they needed uh, another opinion and they wanted to look at this possibility. Dr. Kilpatrick detailed his observations about Maya. Dystonia is when the muscles contract due to the disease. They just, usually they're curling in. So if a child comes in with dystonia, you gotta be thinking about CRPS. He also gave his opinion about Maya's mother, Beata, who hospital staff accused of doctor shopping, medical child abuse, and Munchausen syndrome by proxy. She wants to know details. She's uh, very medically oriented. And uh, I like that. I, I, and to me, it's, it's refreshing. Pediatric and forensic psychiatrist Dr. Timothy Brewer also took to the stand today. He evaluated the Kowalski family after Maya's sheltering at the hospital and her mother's suicide. He concluded the family was dealing with extreme PTSD. This was a trauma for everyone, especially Maya, but also Kyle and also Jack. If everyone is suffering and kind of in the same hole, it makes it much harder to get out of that hole. Maya Kowalski herself on Monday sharing what she described as traumatic interactions with some hospital staff. I genuinely believe that they just wanted to push me to the limit of like, oh, I'm about to pee myself. I have to get up and stand. But that never happened. Instead, I just peed on myself. And Maya's family's lawsuit is alleging medical malpractice and false imprisonment. And they are also blaming the hospital for Beata Kowalski's suicide. Attorneys for Johns Hopkins maintain that staff were only following laid down DCF orders for the patient and acting in the interest of the child over concerns about excessive use of ketamine. Live in Venice, Aduria Chumba, 10 Tampa Bay.